this last lecture, and this is actually going to be a rather really short lecture. I'm going to talk a little bit about analysis of covariance and how it differs from analysis of variance, but there's I'm not going to do any equations up here. Well, not really. I'm not going to draw any pictures. I'm definitely not going to draw any pictures. But we're going to focus on analysis of covariance quickly and then send you off to your computer program so that you can figure out how to do these analyses. So let's begin. The one difference, dare I say the only difference, between analysis of covariance and analysis of, of, analysis of variance, is that in analysis of variance, ANOVA, all of the independent variables are categorical, nominal or ordinal. And I said this in the first lecture, that would be the, the core of all of this class, except for the last lecture. And here we are at the ultimate lecture. In analysis of covariance, you have at least one independent variable that's numeric. Regression, if you've taken regression. When we first introduced you to regression, we said all of the independent variables were numeric. So this ANCOVA kind of serves as the bridge between ANOVA and regression. At least it seems to. But again, as I've said previously, there is absolutely no difference in the mathematics between ANOVA and regression, and therefore between ANOVA and COVA and regression. It's all matrix algebra underneath the hood. It's just different ways of interpreting. And we call it ANOVA if all of the independent variables are categorical. We call it regression if they're all numeric. We call it ANCOVA if they're all categorical except one two maybe are numeric. And if you think about it, what function have we been using for ANOVA in our in SAS? We'll go with that. What function? GLM. And what function do we use in SAS for regression? GLM. For the R people, what have we been using? AOV. But there is no difference between the AOV function and the LM function. Okay, slight difference. But functionally, no difference. It's because analysis of variance and regression, and therefore ANCOVA, all do the same thing. The only difference between the AOV function and the LM function is the summary. You do a summary of an AOV, and you get the analysis of variance table. If you do a summary of an LM, then you get the regression table. But as you've been seeing recently, our people, You can use summary.lm to get a regression table off of, an, off of using an AOV, because it's the same thing. So the key is you have one independent variable that's numeric. And the, the boundary between regression and ANCOVA, there isn't one really. Um, ANCOVA requires at least one numeric and one categorical. Um, they tend to have, at most, one numeric, but in all, all reality, you can use, I mean, all reality, there's no difference. And chapter 11 in the book talks about these uh, dummy variables. And dummy variables, in a regression context, give us the exact same results as ANOVA. So really, all we've done over the past 13 lectures is regression by different names. Or, you can leave it this way, all we're doing in this lecture is analysis of variance by a different name. It's all in your interpretation. 
So dependent variable is still numeric. Independent variable One's got to be categorical, one's got to be numeric, and beyond that, it could be any mixture. It tends to be just one numeric when we're talking about ANCOA. Oh, well, that's it. I don't know where else to go with this. Um, if you care about the categorical, if this is your the effect that you care about, if that's the fixed effect, then you're going to want to look at intercepts, or the distance between the lines. If this is what you care about, you're going to want to talk, talk about slopes. Because, oh, here we go, I'll draw a picture. For instance, sorry about that, the uh, battery died, so I, I gotta hurry up because I'm running out of, one, running out of battery, and two, running out of cold air in here. So let's say we've got where dependent variable is going to be um, grade in statistics. I don't have black. There we go. So dependent variable y equals grade in stats. Um, x my covariate. This is going to be my numeric independent variable. That's going to be GPA. And I guess I could make that x1 because we have two independent variables here. x2 is going to be gender. We'll make it something easy. So gender is going to be our categorical variable. GPA is going to be our numeric. These two together make this analysis of covariance. I'm trying to predict grade. So we're going to uh, we're going to draw this. It's going to range from zero to a hundred, and then GPA going to range from zero to four. Notice that we're plotting in our scatter plot the two numeric variables. Because if we plot a numeric variable with a categorical variable, we're going to have a box plot or something like that. So here are the grades that I measure 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 8. That works. Oh, but wait, we got gender. Each of those dots refers to a student. The student also not only has a GPA and a grade and stat, but also has a gender. So I've got blue and red. This was a female. And that was a male. I need one more hand. I'll make this a male and this a male. And this male, and get rid of all the blues, and then we got this be a female, and this is a female, and this is a female. So now we've indicated our two independent variables on the same graphic. And what analysis of covariance does is it first will fit a line with the males, and then fit a line with the females, depending on whether or not there is an interaction. If we decide that there is an interaction, you can't see that. If there's an interaction, then the slopes are going to be allowed to be different. So, for instance, if we allow for an interaction in this model, that could be the slope for the females, that could be the slope for the males. Notice the slopes are different. And we could test whether or not those two slopes are significantly different. If, oh, slope's different. If we force this to be an additive model, then those slopes are going to be exactly the same. They're going to be parallel.
the effect of GPA on final grade is going to be the same for males and females for an additive model. The effect, that's the slope. If we had an interaction, the effect may not be the same. In fact, the way I had it drawn, the effect of GPA on grade was greater for males than it was for females because the slope for males was steeper, was greater than the slope for females. So in your experimental design, you're going to have to decide whether you want an interaction or an additive model. The book seems to prefer starting with the additive model. In my experience, I prefer going with the interaction model first, allowing the slopes to be different, and then checking to see if they are statistically different. And if they are different, keep the interaction. But if the two slopes are not statistically different, then I will eliminate the interaction and go with an additive model. And the slope again is how much up over how much over, or the rise over the run. Definition of the slope is the amount increase in the dependent variable for every one increase in the independent variable. Since we're fitting these with lines, the slopes are going to be constant. And again, if it is an additive model, the lines will be parallel. And if it's an interaction, they may not be. And that's it. I'm going to stop there. I'm going to send you off to R and SAS companions. We'll talk some more about the ANCOVA model. You'll realize this really is just regression. Thank you very much. And this actually was the last lecture, so I hope everything's working well for you. Take care. Bye.